is just fantastic. Captain's Log, Subdates 220503.1 When a celebrity enters our ISO cubes, we here like to roll out the red carpet by doing a full cavity search in front of all the inmates. If any of them get turned on as a consequence, they then have their eyeballs removed for 28 days, which can be a slight inconvenience if their release date is during that time. Hello everyone and welcome to the Halls of Injustice. Today we're going to be covering somebody who has committed a crime that is vastly different to all the crimes we've covered so far this year. And I'll be honest, this is refreshing by the very standard of all the crimes we've covered so far, so yes, at least one will be monetized. Do me a solid, smash the like, leave a comment, share the video. It really helps. Our newest addition to the ISO cubes is inmates number 126, aka Boris Becker, a very well-known athlete formerly, retired in 1999, who has committed a really stupid crime, all are stupid of course, but this one especially so and a tad cliche for athletes post-career. And he will be with us for a while, I mean it could be longer, we will have to wait and see. So first we're going to talk about who Boris Becker is, as it does help set up the crimes he committed because I think we can all agree with what he was charged, guilty, sentenced for, everyone knew it was going to happen eventually. So who is Boris Becker? Boris Becker was born in some place that I can't pronounce in Germany in 1967. At the age of seven, Boris Becker started to play tennis. Ten years later, he became the youngest winner, and is still to this day, of a Grand Slam title. In tennis, there are four main Grand Slam tournaments. The Australian Open, the French Open, Wimbledon, and the US Open. Boris Becker won Wimbledon on three occasions, with one being his first. He won the Australian Open twice, with his second being his last ever Grand Slam win, three years before he retired. He won the US Open in 1989, but never won the French Open, which is quite common for many people that are not Bjorn Bork and Rafael Nadal. He was incredibly successful at a young age. During his career, he won an estimated $25 million, which in the all-time earnings leaderboard places him 14. He won in total 49 career titles and was ranked world number one, along with winning the Olympic Games doubles tournament in 1992 and the Davis Cup on two separate occasions in 1988 and 1989. As a coach, which was later on in his career, he coached Novak Djokovic for three years. As a coach, he won 25 singles titles. Six of those were Grand Slams with one becoming a complete slam, i.e. all four Grand Slam titles being won by the player. A career slam, I believe, is the correct term. Something that Boris Becker was notable for during his career was his emotional outbursts on court, which frequently ended with him swearing and smashing his own rackets, which inevitably ended with him getting fined repeatedly. When Boris Becker retired in 1999, he transitioned over to commentary, where he did, I'll be honest, excel. But he did concede his approach to retirement from the game was a bit tricky because he'd been so successful in his younger years that he was looking for the next big thing in life that wasn't tennis. He was the owner of a tennis racket and clothing manufacturer. He published an autobiography called The Player when translated in 2003. In 2009, he launched Boris Becker TV that featured clips from his career and footage of his daily life. In 2017, Boris Becker was named the head of men's tennis of the German Tennis Federation. And for 10 years, he was on the economic advisory board of Bayern Munich, a tad ironic considering what he's in prison for now. Boris Becker was married on two occasions throughout his life. He has four children, one of which was a love child that he denied having. Two came from his first marriage, one from his last marriage. A divorce for the first one cost him over $15 million. There's a reason for that. It's quite a messy divorce, I'll admit. And he has been declared bankrupt on more than one occasion, with the second handily leading into the crimes 
of Boris Becker. So perhaps we'll talk about the first one before we get to what he actually did that got him into so much trouble, although it all ties in handily anyway. In 1996, a criminal investigation into his tax affairs began because Boris Becker had deliberately made false statements in his tax return in order to save 3.3 million Deutschmark. At the beginning of the trial in 2002, there was a delay. Boris admitted that he lived in Munich between 1991 and 1993, although he was officially registered as living in Monaco, a tax haven. At the same time, Boris emphasised that he did not occasionally live in a classic apartment in Munich, but in a Spartan room. He had actually been warned by accountants about buying that apartment, but decided, oh wo well, yolo fam, I'm having it. The court assessed the fact that Becker paid around 3 million euros for the period from 1991 to 95 to settle his tax debt as mitigating the penalty. On the 24th of October 2002, the Munich District Court sentenced him for tax evasion to spend two years in prison. The execution of that sentence was suspended. Additionally, he was ordered to pay a fine of 300,000 euros and another 200,000 euros to various charitable institutions. So with all that in mind, we now get to skip ahead to the 21st of June 2017, where we can now discuss the more recent crime of Boris Becker. In 2015, Boris Becker owed a private bank nearly $14 million. On June the 21st, 2017, Boris Becker was declared bankrupt by the Bankruptcy and Companies Court in London. That $14 million was not paid in full before an assigned deadline, and it was agreed by most that there was no realistic expectation that it would be paid. Boris Becker had denied that he was broke, or that he owed a former business advisor any money. That same business advisor filed a suit in Switzerland claiming he was owed $41 million. In June 2018, Boris Becker's lawyers claimed that Boris had diplomatic immunity in the bankruptcy case owing to his appointment as the Central African Republic's attaché for sports, humanitarian, and cultural affairs in the European Union. The Central African Republic's foreign minister countered that Boris was not an official diplomat for the Central African Republic and that the role of attaché for sports does not exist and that the passport that Boris had produced was one of a batch that had been stolen in 2014. Things aren't looking good, are they? In September 2019, the German businessman Stephen Well, who provided the passport, was then detained for fraud. On the 21st of May 2019, Smith and Williamson announced it had instructed its agents, Wiles Hardy, to auction Boris's trophies and memorabilia. It was reported later in that year that Boris was forced to auction off 82 collectibles from his collection, which included his trophy from the 1989 US Open. The auction raised £687,000. On the 5th of November 2019, the bankruptcy restrictions were extended for an additional 12 years until the 16th of October 2031, after Boris Becker was judged to have been hiding assets and transactions worth £4.5 million. Pounds. With the moving of funds and hiding of transactions, this is where the issue is. Boris had failed to declare that he owned property in Germany, hiding an €825,000 loan, along with shares in a tech firm. This all came to light when this all went back to court. Boris Becker attributed his financial problems and the fact he no longer had his $50 million worth of career earnings to being swallowed up in expensive divorces, the harm done to brand Becker because of the bankruptcy, the fact that he had expensive lifestyle commitments that he wasn't willing to change. For example, his house in Wimbledon cost 22 grand a month in rent. You might have looked a tad better had you simply got a house share or downsized to something more reasonable instead of thinking, ah, but I'm Boris, people will want to flock to me. Boris Becker faced many counts during the trial, 20 of those counts though he was acquitted of. That did include him failing to hand over his many awards. So he was acquitted of that and they focused solely on where the money was going, where he was borrowing it from, and the fact he didn't pay any of it back. Boris Becker was found guilty of bankruptcy fraud, where he had transferred hundreds of thousands of pounds 
after his 2017 bankruptcy from his business account to other accounts. Those included accounts of his ex-wife and estranged wife. He was also convicted of failing to declare the property he had in Germany and hiding 825,000 euros along with shares in a tech firm. And it is with that we come to a sentence. I had thought, even though the UK law says seven year maximum, wow, that perhaps Boris would get a slap on the wrist because it's Boris Becker and famous people generally don't get sentences. He got two and a half years, so he'll be out in a year and a half, maybe less. Well done, Boris Becker. His daughter, the one from the relationship that he had accidentally, says that it's not fair that he was jailed for bankruptcy fraud. Sounds to me like you haven't got a clue what our system's like. I know many will now say in the comments, so by all means do as your obligatory comment, TAXATION IS THEFT! We can talk about that in a completely separate video, okay? When it comes to abiding the law and implementing the law, Boris Becker was given a light sentence considering the efforts he went to to avoid paying his debts. And he lied about it extensively. So do enjoy your time in the ISO cubes, Mr. Becker. Might be a good idea to take the advice of your fellow inmates and dye your hair so you don't stand out as much. Not that you'll listen, you'll more than likely start coaching a tennis team while in there. The rackets don't have strings though because they can't be trusted. Or balls. They also can't be trusted.